C-Corporation Double Taxation Problem 1. Coconut, an individual, has a 35% marginal rate and owns 100% of the stock of Tropical Corporation, a C-Corporation for federal tax purposes. This year, Tropical Corporation generated $400,000 of taxable income, paid $84,000 of corporate income tax, and paid a $50,000 dividend to Coconut. Suppose that the federal income tax system has been amended to allow shareholders to gross up dividend income by the corporate tax rate paid with respect to the dividend and credit this tax against their individual tax. Further, assume that dividends received by individuals are not eligible for a preferential tax rate. Assuming that the corporate tax rate is 21%, calculate Coconut's reported dividend income and tax due on the dividend. This is a very interesting question. It's meant to show you the two levels of tax on C corporations and also what would happen in a different system where you're able to what we call gross up the amount paid in terms of the corporate tax and adjusting for their individual tax in a, in a different type of tax system um, without getting a, a benefit for the preferential tax rate that some taxpayers can get where they get a lower rate on long-term capital gains or qualified dividends. So first thing I want to explain is we have an individual, a 35% marginal tax rate. That's, of course, tax rate. We're dealing with taxes, so 35% marginal rate, we mean 35% marginal tax rate. And they own 100% of the stock of a corporation. It's the C corporation. You might be thinking, well, why are they a C corporation? Why aren't they an S corporation? We don't know, but we're, those are what, that's what we're told. Of course, more videos we get into and more material, we compare C corporation versus S corporation versus partnerships or entities taxes partnerships. But right now, just an entity that's a C corporation. This year, Tropical Corporation uh, generated $400,000 of taxable income, pays $84,000 of corporate income tax, which if you calculate that, that's going to be 21%. That's a 21% tax rate, which I tell you down here as well, assume the corporate tax rate is 21%. So you could have actually calculated that um, by, by that information, but that is 21% and paid a $50,000 dividend to Coconut. So that's after the amount was taxed. That was after the amount was taxed. So let's just, before we get into this, suppose that the federal income tax system changes, let's just think about what is the current law? What is the actual law? And I know the question is not asking about that, but the current law, the current system we have, okay, C corporations have double taxation. And the double taxation is the first level is at the entity level, at the entity level. And that is the tropical corporation here, which generates $400,000 of income. So $400,000 of corporate income, that income is subject to a 21% tax rate because we're told, assume a 21% tax rate. And again, we calculated it here. So we multiply that and we're going to get $84,000 of tax due or tax owed to the federal government. So tax due or tax owed. So that amount is paid. Then the second level is on the distribution which assuming there is enough earnings and profits, and you'll learn about earnings and profits and the effect of that and why it's important. But if there's enough earnings and profits, let's assume that we have lots of EMP, lots of EMP, which means that the $50,000 of distribution will be a dividend. I actually say dividend, $50,000 of dividend. And let's assume that there is a preferential rate that applies under the current law, under the current law. Again, we'll do the actual question in a moment the actual question, but I'm just showing you the current law right now. Okay. The actual question, we'll do that in a moment and we'll determine with this change in the tax law, the reported dividend income and the amount of uh, due tax due on the dividend. But I want to show you what's under the current law. Let's assume that um, coconut, the individual has a preferential rate of 20%, 20% subject to that amount. So that means that on the 50,000, we're going to have $10,000 that coconut has to pay at the individual level. So the entity level, and then there's also at the individual shareholder level. That is the second level of tax on the distribution. And those are the two levels of tax. Now, of course, as you might know, 
the entity level is required to be paid, but if no distribution is paid out, you can time this in a way that, hey, you don't have to actually pay a second level of tax. There's other issues like the accumulated earnings tax or personal holding company tax, but if you can play that right, you don't have to pay tax the second level if, it, if the entity keeps retaining its earnings, and you can play games with that, and you can use that as a planning technique to save taxes as well. But a lot of businesses, they have to distribute out money for um, – for purposes of the accumulated earnings tax, for purposes of the owners wanting to get some return on their investment, you know, a non-tax, you know, reasons the owners want to get their money. So the idea here is between this $84,000 and $10,000, between these two amounts, $94,000 is paid in taxes total. So in our current system, again, assuming 21% corporate tax rate and a 20% preferential rate that applies to coconut, there is $94,000 of tax paid in total, of tax paid in total. There's no benefit to the individual at the second level of paying the $84,000 tax due. There's no reduction. And that's what this next question is getting at. So, so And this is the actual question. We're going to do what's called a gross up, a gross up, where you get benefit from paying out in the first level. So suppose that the federal tax system has been amended. So now we're getting to the question. I just showed you the current law. Very important to show you so you understand that. Suppose that the federal income tax system has been amended to allow shareholders to gross up, that's what we mean gross up, gross up dividend income by the corporate tax rate paid with respect to the dividend and credit this tax against their individual tax. So the idea is that the $84,000 of tax paid, you now get this benefit where it's at the second level where it reduces the amount of taxes owed because oh a first level is already paid. Okay, and further assume that there's no preferential rates. There is no preferential rates in this case. In this case, okay, there's no preferential rates now. Which since there's no preferential rates, I want to go ahead and I want to change. Let me erase this um, previous question and calculate this so that 20% preferential rate. Let's let's take that away and let's assume that's a 35% rate. Let's assume it's a 35% rate. So that I just want to show you what it would be normally if there was a preferential rate. You might have looked at just so you know and you thought about that. But let's look at if that $50,000 is subject to a 35% rate because, again, for the actual problem, we're assuming there's no preferential rates. We're, we're saying there's no. And it's possible that um, this is not a qualified dividend. They don't qualify for the preferential rates for various reasons. They're not within certain income amounts. Whatever it is, they don't qualify for the preferential rates, and they have to pay on their marginal rate of 35%. 50,000 times 35% is $17,500. And $17,500 plus $84,000, that's going to be $101,500. $101,500. $84,000 plus $17,500. You're going to get $101,500 in tax paid in total under our current law. Again, assuming no preferential rate applies. Okay, so now we're going back to the actual question, the gross up. And again, let me explain the gross up. So we're changing the tax law. This is not what's actually in the tax law. But what the idea is that this $84,000 of tax due, it gives no benefit to the individual shareholder when they're calculating the tax owed on the distribution. There's no benefit. There's no benefit of that. What if we? What if the law was changed? to provide some type of benefit in that system. And we want to know, and again, no preferential rate applies, 21%, 21% corporate tax rate, and we want to know what is Coconut's reported dividend income in a, in a gross-up system and the tax due on the dividend. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to calculate, and this is the actual question. The current law, we already did that. Now we're getting to the actual question. So what is the dividend income in a grossed-up system where, again, there's benefit of the amount paid of tax by the um, the corporation. So the entity level tax calculation, the 400,000 times 21%, that would still be the same even in this gross up calculation. But what we're getting at is we're getting at the second part, the individual shareholder level. So the first thing is, okay, well, it no longer is a $50,000 dividend. It's $400,000 of, of tax generated, but the $50,000 of dividend now has to be changed because of the tax that was paid. So we're, we gross up in that, in that way. So the way that we calculate the gross up is we take the $50,000 dividend that would have been before, and we're going to divide that by one minus the corporate tax rate. The corporate tax rate. And the corporate tax rate here is 21%. So it's going to be 50000 And that 50000 again, comes from what the dividend was 
again, what we calculated, what we're told um, that um, that coconut gets. So 50,000 over 1 minus 0 0.21 is going to be 0 0.79, 0 0.79. And that's going to equal, the amount of the dividend is going to equal 63000 $291. That is the grossed up amount. That is the grossed up dividend income amount. So $63,291 is now the amount that would have to be paid in dividend if this grossed up system is allowed. That is, is, is the amount that's allowed. Okay, that's we're not done because that's the first part of the question. What is the coconuts reported dividend income under a gross up system? It would be $63,291. And then what's the tax due on the dividend? All right. Now what we do is we take the $63,291. So again, we're calculating here. So dividend income, we just calculated that. Now we're calculating the tax due on the dividend. So tax due on the dividend. We're going to take the $63,291 and we're going to multiply that by the dividend tax rate. We're told there's no preferential rates. We're told no preferential tax rates apply. We're told there's a 35% marginal rate that applies. So it's going to be 63291 sorry, $63,291 times 35%. And you're saying that's it, right? Well, remember, the whole idea here is we grossed up because you're now getting the benefit because as it says, suppose the federal income tax system has been amended to allow shareholders to gross up dividends by a corporate tax rate paid with respect to the dividend and credit this tax against our individual tax. So this is where that tax comes into play. So we take 63,291 and then we subtract away the difference between the 63,291 and the $50,000 that was originally in the dividend. So we basically are taking the $63,291 amount and we're taking the $50,000 original dividend amount. So $13,291. So we're going to take the $63,291, we're going to calculate, multiply that by 35%, and then we're going to calculate that number, and then we subtract away $13,291, the difference between the dividend income that we grossed up, we calculated, and the $50,000 original dividend because the idea is that the share of tax that you're paying you're able to subtract away now in the new system. Again, this is not current law, this is not the law, but that is what we do. When we do that calculation, you're gonna get the tax amount owed, which equals $8,861, $8,861. Now that's a lot less than the $17,500 that was paid by the individual. So again, the $84,000 of tax due, that's still the same. That would be the same regardless in the old system or new system or the, under the current law or this changed law. Okay, eighty-four thousand dollars at the first entity level. That's going to be the same. Four hundred thousand times twenty-one percent. What we're changing is we're now changing the current law, which we calculated seventeen thousand five hundred dollars, but this one creates eighty-eight sixty-one, and the way is because it allows for a deduction for the taxes paid by the corporation, and it gives us benefit, which is why we subtract away. Um, the 63, we take the 63,291, the grossed up dividend income amount times the tax owed 35%, but we subtract away 13,291, which is the difference in terms of what was already paid by the corporation. So this is what's going on. $63,291 of dividend, because remember we changed it, right? The, we, the first question is what's coconuts reported dividend income under this system, 63291 of the $400,000. If we multiply that by 0 0.21, we get 13291 If we take 63291 minus 13291 you get $50,000. $50,000 is what you originally, we, we originally, in our, in our current law system, that's what we originally had, right? That amount. So that makes sense. That's where the $50,000 comes into play. That's why we had to do this calculation. What it's saying is, okay, the individual gets to subtract away the 13291 portion because that portion was already paid in taxes by the, by the corporation. Because remember, now the system is allowing a credit against the taxes paid by the corporation with respect to 
against the individual tax. So the idea is that we're not we're not counting this tax twice. Of course, the individual has a 35% rate and the corporation is doing 21% on this amount. So of course, the difference is 8861 will be the difference between the 35% minus the 21%, which is going to equal 14%. So 35% minus 21%. Again, the corporation already paid taxes on 21% of the 400,000 and we're making a distribution of 63,000. Again, that's what we adjusted for this portion of the question. So 14%. And if we take 63,000, 291, the number we calculated when we grossed up, and we multiply that by 0.14, we get 8861. And that's the idea is that that 14% number is what the difference is in terms of what the individual is paying because 21% because has already been paid and tax has already been paid on the amount. So if we change to a system where we allow the individual at the second level to basically get a deduction or a credit, here a credit, against the amount paid by the corporation, this is how we would have to do it. We'd have to gross up the dividend that would be wanted. So if you did want to pay a $50,000 dividend because of the tax benefit, you would have to basically say, well, you pay a $63,000 amount to get the same adjustment. And then what you would do is you would calculate the tax due as we just did. So again, to reiterate the question, and again, this isn't the current law. The current law is over here on the left. We already showed the current law. We do not gross up under the current law. But if we, if you were allowed to gross up, what you would do, first you have to calculate the new dividend income. You take the dividend income under the old system, what the what's going on in the corporation here, fifty thousand dollars. That's the numerator. You divide that by one minus the corporate tax rate. Corporate tax rate here is twenty one percent. So you take fifty thousand divided by 0.79, you get sixty three thousand two hundred ninety one dollars. That is the amount of dividend income. Then to get the amount of tax due on the dividend, you take sixty three thousand two hundred ninety one dollars, the amount of dividend income grossed up. You calculated. We multiply that by the tax rate of the individual, which again no preferential rate applies. So you take thirty five percent of that. Then you subtract away the difference between the dividend income that you grossed up and calculated in the first step and the $50,000 that would have been under the old system, and that's 13291 You subtract away those two numbers and you get the amount of tax owed on the dividend because, again, you get this credit from the corporation paying 21% tax on the $63,291 already. So I know it's kind of hard to understand, but the answers are dividend income. Coconuts reported dividend income under this new system, $63,291. And then the amount of tax due on the dividend is $8,861. If you're asked a gross up question on an exam, or certification exam in practice, this is how you do it. In practice, it shouldn't really be that important because it's not the law. But if you if we did have this in the law, this is how you would calculate it. You would again calculate the dividend income as I showed, and then you would get the tax due on the dividend, which I showed you as well.